So we want to choose a site to look at when we go out and do our survey to see whether there's any seagrass that's um, out in the ocean. So before we go out on our survey, we've got a couple of resources that we can use to identify some like, likely places. And this um, aerial imagery from something like Bing Maps is a really good way of seeing where there might be seagrass because sometimes seagrass beds show up as this kind of like darker sort of contrast against a, a sandy bottom. So something like that in the kind of shallow water in an area where you think that there could be seagrass can be a good sign that there might be um, a seagrass bed present. And then it's good to have a look on the map and also maybe um, on your paper map just to establish that there's actually going to be some way where you can potentially park and get your equipment safely to and from the water and you're going to be able to access this kind of area. And then by having a bit of an overview on the map and on the computer and maybe also looking at um, one of the nautical charts, you can get a bit of an idea of what sort of hazards there might be in the area and also you can um, check out the tide times because if you're surveying it's going to be useful to know um, when the low tide is because then the water is going to be more shallow and it's going to be easier to see the seagrass because it's going to be nearer the surface and also you can get information about if there's going to be any um, like strong tides or anything that might be a safety problem. So we've identified an area on satellite imagery that looks like it could be potentially seagrass and now we want to go and visit it live and ground truth that to see if it is seagrass or if that's just all seaweed or something like that that we just don't know at the moment. So we want to go out there and map it to get its like current accurate extent. Yeah. Should we go out there and do it? Definitely. So we're about to get ready to go out and do a, a seagrass habitat mapping. Um, hopefully there's some seagrass out there. Uh, you can see we've got two paddle boards here. Uh, we work in pairs for safety and for data accuracy. So essentially when we're looking for an unknown seagrass bed, we're going to be going out in two paddle boards and we're going to be paddling abreast about two or four meters apart depending on visibility. That way our search pattern covers the most ground as possible. We choose to do this by paddle board you can also done it under a kayak or a canoe or other um, boat. But essentially, we find that paddle boarding is great because that height of eye being stood up lets you look down into the water and see the seagrass uh, very easily. Once we've found the seagrass, we're going to locate an edge of the seagrass, come together, and then one person will go ahead as a scout, making sure we find where that boundary is in case it kind of gets a bit difficult to find or peters out or kind of almost patches into different groups but the second person is going to be the recorder they're going to activate their tracking device on the gps either on their gps enabled watch or on their smartphone and then they're going to make sure they always stay on that boundary if the scout needs to stop and look around for the patch the recorder is going to stay on the boundary making sure he doesn't move off that track and affect the recording and then once the scout is happy to go ahead again the recorder will follow slowly behind. So this is the equipment that we need here for the seagrass habitat mapping and hopefully it's all sort of fairly simple um, and not overly expensive equipment. So we've got the, the paddleboard which Eric just talked about as the way that we're going to get on the water but you might want to use you know a kayak or a, a different type of boat. And then for the actual recording we've got um, so a GPS enabled device so either the GPS enabled watch like a sort of running outdoor sports watch or a GPS app on your smartphone and Probably if it's your phone, you want to make sure that it's in a, a waterproof case or a waterproof bag. Um, we've also got like a little dive slate. So in case you want to note down any anything else that you sort of think of whilst you're out on the water. And then when we're going around the edge of the um, seagrass bed, 
We also want to make sure that it's definitely seagrass that we're, that we're seeing that's under the water. So you might find that you can see that well enough if the water's really clear, or it might be a good idea just to take like a snorkel mask so that you can just dip your head into the water and check that it's seagrass. Or sometimes you might even want to get into the water and do a little duck dive down to check. Another alternative to that is having a, a bathoscope, like a bucket with a, a clear bottom that you can put into the water and look in. And then as um, the scout who doesn't have to stay on the, um, the actual GPS track, it's a good idea if they've got some kind of waterproof camera. So something like this is um, Olympus kind of underwater camera or a GoPro, something like that. So you can put that under the water and you can take photos of the, the seagrass. And that's really useful to have along with your mapping um, for the data record. And then the final thing that we've got here um, is just like a safety bag with our safety equipment and first aid kit and those kind of pieces of equipment in there. So again, it's important just to make sure you've got the, the safety equipment that you need with you for your activity. So once we get out to uh, an area where we've located a seagrass meadow, we want to record the extent or the outside boundary of that area. There's kind of two easy ways to do it. Um, if you either have like a, a GPS enabled watch or with your smartphone, you can use something like navigation software like Navionics or like Strava or any sort of like outdoor activity app to record tracks. And pretty much you start that and go along the outside boundary, make sure you stay as accurate as you can to that boundary and complete a full circle to back where you came from. And then once you've done that, uh, come back ashore, you can access that track via some online software. We use often just Strava, which is free and everybody can have access to that. And that allows us to get the GPX file or the file of our track off our phone or watch and then we can take that into whatever um, GIS software we want to use to analyze that. And now you have a recorded position of the seagrass meadow. So we're doing a seagrass survey. So we've got our transec line, which is a a line weighted at one end, it's a 25 meter dive reel with markings every two meters. So we're going to put the weight down on the seabed and start unwinding the reel as we swim along. And every two meter mark we're going to stop, put the quadrat down and take a picture to measure the percentage cover of seagrass within the quadrat. We're then going to lift the quadrat up or use the line attached that's marked at certain intervals to measure the canopy height, so the vertical height of the seagrass. We're going to do that every 2 meters for 25 meters, so we're getting about 12 quadrats uh, for each transect survey that we complete. And then whilst we're measuring the seagrass um, canopy height and the seagrass cover, we're going to be working in our buddy pairs for, for safety while we're diving, but also means that we can carry out a biodiversity transect at the same time. So it's going to be following the same transect that's laid down in the water with the dive reel. And what the biodiversity surveyor is going to do is they're going to swim along and they're going to record all of the species that they see in that transect, a metre either side and all the way up and down in the water column and on the seabed. So that's all the species of plants like the seaweeds and also all the mobile species that might be swimming around. And then some of those species, maybe like the smaller ones that are stuck to rocks or seaweed as well. To help you remember them and be able to identify them afterwards, we're going to take a photo of each different species that we see. Um, and that provides, I say, a good um, aid to memory so you don't have to remember all of them. But also, if there's any that you're not sure about how to identify, if you've got good pictures of those, that'll help you identify them later. Or maybe you can show, them, show the photos to other experts and help get identification. And it will also verify the species that you did see. If there's any that you're particularly unsure about and you know you're going to ha have um, difficulty identifying them, then if you take photos from a couple of different angles, that's really helpful as well. 
So I've got an underwater digital camera. This one I've got in a, um, a case here, but you can just use an underwater camera like that or maybe a GoPro. And then I also, so that we can get as much information as possible from this transect, I have got another GoPro attached to me here as a chest cam. And as I swim along the surface, it's just gonna record a video transect of the seabed as I go over it. When I go in the water, I'm just gonna set that to go on film mode and that's going to film the um, transect and that will be useful for analysis later on as well. It's really important when you do your transect that you get the GPS position of the start and the finish. The easiest way we find to do it is using the GPS in the camera, make sure it's held out of the water and gets a good signal from the sky and take a picture just of the general area at the start and at the finish so that you know exactly where the transect was taken. That's cool. If you haven't got the GPS function on your camera, you could also use the GPS enabled watch that you might have been using for the mapping. Obviously the GPS doesn't work when you go underneath the water, so you might actually want to, we found it works quite well if you strap the watch onto the back of the strap on your um, snorkel mask and that will record like the position and the, the length of your transect.